Hello and welcome to another video. After the success of the EQ comparison video, I'm going to be doing the same thing, but this time for reverbs. So I'm going to be comparing stock and free reverbs that might come with your DAW to more expensive or premium paid for reverbs. I'm going to be looking at three reasons why you might choose one over the other. I don't really have a bias going into this video because I love loads of stock and free plugins and I use them all the time and I also use a couple of paid plugins as well. I'm not planning on making this as scientific as the EQ video. It's not really about matching things or getting perfect results as was the case with that EQ video. I'll get into the audio examples in just a moment but the first reason I think you might choose one over the other is simply the sound differences that they create. So all reverb plugins have different algorithms, different convolution and sampling technologies, different libraries that they're calling upon. And as a result, they all just naturally sound different. You're not necessarily trying to find a reverb that sounds better or cleaner or more pristine than the next one. You're just trying to find a reverb that's appropriate to the sound. The second reason is familiarity. And for this, I'm just gonna jump straight into the DAW. So I'm going to be using uh, FL Studio and Studio One to demonstrate this. I have Fruity Reverb 2. Now anyone that uses this DAW will probably love this plugin. We're all pretty familiar with it and comfortable with it. And sometimes if you've been using a plugin like this for a long time and you know how to get good sounds out of it, if you're just familiar and comfortable with it, it's probably what you should use to get a good sound. If I jump over to Studio One, their Room Reverb plugin is their sort of stock reverb. And if you're a Studio One user, you probably know how to get a really good sound out of this. I'm still kind of learning the ins and outs of it. However, if like me, you jump between different DAWs, depending on, you know, what client you're working on and what mix or which studio you're in, I can't use Fruity Reverb 2 inside Pro Tools or Studio One. So if I'm doing a mix in Studio One, if I use a different third party plugin, like in this case, the Verb Suite Classics from Slate Digital, which is a paid for plugin, or the Valhalla Room, which is another very popular third-party plugin. I can open that in FL Studio, Pro Tools, Studio One, and I know that the sound it creates will be exactly the same. So if I open that uh, Verb Suite plugin inside Studio One, it's going to sound pretty much exactly the same as it does in FL Studio, whereas the stock Room Reverb plugin does not sound like Fruity Reverb 2 whatsoever. And just before we get into the audio examples, the third reason is the CPU power that it takes to run these plugins. In an ideal world, we would all be using a supercomputer to make music. However, uh, you know, when I started on an inexpensive laptop, I just couldn't use very many plugins and CPU made a huge difference. So in this case, I'm just going to compare the CPU usage of some different plugins. Up at the top here, I have a CPU load meter, which is currently sitting on 2% because my screen recorder's on. And in the mixer, I have 10 instances of Fruity Reverb loaded on this guitar track. I'll probably mute the output because it's not important, but uh, this is how much CPU 10 instances of Fruity Reverb 2 uses. So you can see that it has jumped up to 11%, which means it's using about just under 1% per instance. Now if I add another 10 there, so we've got 20, it jumps up to about 18%, which means each instance of one of these plugins uses 0.8% of my computer's CPU. If I do the same test with Verb Suite Classics, which is the Slate Digital uh, plugin, let's see how much this uses with 10 instances. So we set on 2% and I'll press play on the same stem. So immediately 10 instances jumps me up to about 37, 36%. So we're well over 3% per plugin. So there's quite a big difference there already. In this case, the stock reverb just uses a lot less, which means I could have more instances of that reverb in my project. And now I'm going to look at the Valhalla Room Reverb, which is a very, very popular reverb. Let's see how much CPU this uses. We're sitting on 2%. And we've jumped to 39, maybe 40% it touched there. So just slightly more than the Verb Suite Classics, but again, 3 4% per plugin. Let's do exactly the same test in Studio One. This time I have a CPU monitor and it also shows the CPU for each plugin. I'm going to enable the room reverb here. I have 10 instances in the channel rack. And if I play those 10 instances of the stock reverb takes me up to about 50%, maybe 48, 50%, showing that it's using five or 6% of the CPU on each plugin. However, it does have a perform mode, which means that it's like an economy mode you can use that and then it drops it down to about 1% per plugin, but I don't like using these performance uh, economy modes because I prefer to hear it in the full quality. Now let's contrast that 
with the Verb Suite Classics, so the Slate Digital Reverb. If I now press play, we can see that these are using between 1 and 3% of the CPU per plugin, only 15 to 18%. So in this particular example, the Verb Suite Classics Reverb, the paid for reverb, happens to be quite a lot more efficient than the stock Studio One Reverb just in this particular example. So in, in that case, you know, I could load a lot more the instances of the verb suite, whereas the stock reverb in Studio One would really be crippling my CPU. So those are the three reasons, again, you've got the sound, you've got the user interface, like how well you can use it, and then also the CPU load they cause. So now let's start looking at some of the different sounds available to see which ones we might prefer more. So let's start with that Fruity Reverb 2 plugin on some guitar, and I'm just going to modify some of the settings and you'll hear what it sounds like. So there's lots of different sounds available to you, but they all have quite a similar texture. The thing that made maybe the biggest difference was adjusting the high cut and the low cut to make it sort of darker or brighter. But it was always that sort of, I call it sort of fake reverb, where it's just a kind of shimmery ambience. It doesn't sound like hyper-realistic to a space. You can tweak it a lot and try to make it sound like a chamber, but it never really sounds like, like a space. It always sounds quite atmospheric and airy and and lush is the word that I would use. However, if I now go to the Verb Suite Reverb, it's a completely different story. You have so many more devices and options available to you, and I'll just sort of scroll through just, just a few. I'll just scratch the surface of some of the different tones, and you'll hear that it makes a dramatic difference to the sound. And then if I go into some of the presets, I can choose, you know, small lush guitar room. I can listen to that. And that's sort of, oh wow, that's like old school chorusy. It's got a completely different vibe to it that I just couldn't have got with that other reverb. And again, you also have access to a few other controls on the user interface that you don't have with the other reverb. You have controls for low, mid and high EQ whereas in the other reverb you just had a low filter and a high filter. There's also options for chorus and attack of the reverb, and things like that can often give you a lot more opportunity to shape reverbs. However, this is quite an old-school graphical user interface. I would say it looks a bit like a piece of hardware, whereas if I go to the Valhalla reverb, we have a very modern, sort of cutting-edge uh, graphical user interface, which I know a lot of people love. And these sliders and, and whatnots can make it a lot easier for people to figure out and find the settings they want. So let's just play around with some of these settings now. I mean, that was just gorgeous. And then, you know, changing the depth and increasing the pre-delay, you can make it sound like echoes. Wow. And then you've got lots of different presets here, which are really professional, great sounding presets. So say I want a large ambience. Let's add. The guitar becomes so distant. Whereas now it's like very forward and present. And if I want to change, maybe I want to choose a cathedral. Uh, let's just choose this one. Again, this one is just really, really lush. And 
it sounds in some ways similar to Fruity Reverb 2, but uh, there are a lot more options and things that you can change in the early and late reflections. There's just a lot more control. You've, you can have a much longer decay time and it's easier to, with this depth slider, it's a lot easier to choose between those sort of early and, and late reflections. So you get, you know, you can choose to make it sound really echoey and reverberant or you can just choose to make it swell and, and be lush. And for me, I find it very easy to dial in uh, a really beautiful reverb sound using Valhalla Room. Now I'm going to try to use Fruity Reverb 2 to get like a really realistic room sound if possible. So I've got, you know, a small chamber, very small decay. That really is about as good as I can get it. Like I've, I've tried quite for a while off camera to try and get that to work. Whereas if I choose, say, realistic drum room, something like that. Whereas if I just choose a room, let's just say a cold room, see that. It just already just sounds more realistic and just like a room just right away. And then with the Valhalla reverb, let's choose tiled room. It's always hard to tell in headphones, but that again, that sounds, you know, sort of realistic to, to a tiled chamber. I'm going to try and see if the Verb Suite Classics has a tiled chamber. So let's see, chambers here, tiled chamber. Yeah, again, that sounds pretty good to me. So although this video has got quite long, the sort of take home message after those three points is that yes you absolutely can hear a difference but it's not that you can hear a difference between free stock reverbs and expensive paid for reverbs it's just that every reverb just sounds different some of them sound quite similar some of them sound dramatically different i've also left links to a few free reverbs in the description that i like and links to all the reverbs i've used here there's no sponsorships going on i pay for these just like anyone else but i do like them and use them in my mixes. I'm in the process of making a video comparing uh, stock compressors to paid for compressors and this has actually been really interesting because I did some blind tests myself and I actually got tricked a couple of times so that should be a really interesting video coming out very soon. Anyway, until then I hope you guys have a great week and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.